Okay, I want to go over a quick example from your textbook to explain net present value and internal rate of return. Uh, this is re relative to page one, 361 in your textbook, but they tell us that some initial investment cost $1,000, and we will expect cash flows of $500 after the end of the first year, 400 the second year, 300 the third year, and fourth year 100, and then the project will stop. Well. In order to calculate net present value in Excel, what we have to do is we have to discount back all the present cash flows. Um, so I'm going to click on this cell right here and just kind of show you. If I go up to the f of x, um, the function that we want to pull up is NPV. So at an opportunity cost of 10%, that's what my investors require if I put in the 0 .10, 0 0.1 cash flow of 500, 400, 300, 100 respectively. It says if I discount all those cash flows back to date zero, the present value of all those cash flows is $1,078.82. Hit OK there. But for net present value in Excel, we have to subtract out the initial cash outflow, in this case being $1,000. So the difference between the $1,000 investment and the present value of the cash flows would give us the 78.82. I've just simply summed those two numbers up above with using the uh, sigma right here. But this gives us a positive net present value, so it, it does meet uh, our opportunity cost. Whenever a project has a positive net present value, we accept that project. Now with internal rate return, it's a little bit different. Um, there's a function called the IRR function. So if I just kind of show you this, if I go to f of x and look under financial, and we search for internal rate of return. So scroll down a little bit here. It says IRR. If I hit OK there, it, it looks for values. So I ha I'm going to actually, with this, the IR IRR, a little bit different. I will highlight the negative cash flow and all the cash flows after that. So if I just do values and I highlight the negative 1,000 and scroll down. And right here, we can see where we come up with that 0.1449. Now, by definition, Internal rate of return sets the net present value equal to zero. That is, if we discounted all these cash flows back uh, at the rate of 14.49%, it would be exactly equal to 1,000. And I take 1,000 away, plus 1,000 I have, what gives me a net present value equal to zero. So it's another way to look at uh, what we call like a hurdle rate or benchmark rate. Uh, again, you can see the 14.49%. And kind of another point thing to remember, if you just get uh, 14, it's always a good idea to go out of a certain number of decimal points so you can see what that is, at least to um, two digits. So uh, that gives us a basic overview of net present value, internal rate return. Again, the main thing to remember with net present value, we only do the future cash flows in the value cells. I'll pull that up again, the f of x. Notice the very first value is the cash flow in one year from now. Uh, we don't want to put the outflow here, the negative 1,000, okay, because we have to net that out later. So and that's where I've done that, said the negative 1,000 plus the discounted cash flows gave us a positive net present value of 7882. Again, the internal rate of return, we look at this. Pull up the IRR function. I'm going to highlight the negative cash flow and all future cash flows. And again, the idea that it gives us a rate of 14.49%. So if our opportunity cost was 10%, it exceeded it, and it'd be another uh, decision rule to accept the project. And that's it for our lesson on internal rate of return and net present value.